Hey YouTube, so this week on Witch Please, I wanted to, to speak about the magic uses of spices and herbs from the witch's kitchen. Now, I have wanted to um, talk about this for a while, but the last time I recorded this series of videos, my laptop had a, had a meltdown, which took all the recorded videos along with it. So. I am having to record them all from scratch, so I, I really hope you, you, you like this series. Um, and, you know, if anyone should happen to come across another spice rack like this with these amazing vintage spice jars, you know, let me know. I want more. Um, I'm actually hoping to find three more of these because um, it's, you know, and anything like that, and I was hoping to um, connect them all together so they form a circle. I would um, um, remove this top bit and put on a lazy susan with a, um, a, ut a utensil crock in the middle. So um, that is why I'm looking for three more of these um, unusual little spice rack contraptions. Um, but anyway, on to my vlog. YouTube, so today I wanted to discuss um, another herb in my um, in my hearth witchery series, and that is mustard, bright yellow, delicious on hot dog mustard. Um, they're uh, like cardamom for there isn't a lot of herbal lore to go upon um, in terms of of mustard. It is, of course, a bright yellow seed. Um, therefore, it is associated with the planet, with the sun, and with the planet Mercury. Um, it, it can speed things along um, in, in that sense, especially um, treasure and, and health and prosperity. Um, some witches actually use mustard seed in, in spells to bring um, quick cash and, and, and money and prosperity and other needed things. Uh, Lori Cabot pu published a, a spell along those lines in her book Power of the Witch. In, um, in Mexico, however, there's a really interesting folk spell uh, to deter witches from entering a, a residence by either taking the ground spice or the condiment itself and, and using it to draw a cross on on a wall near the near the bed in which one is is sleeping to protect them during the night and a very similar spell um, almost identical is used also in Poland um, where um, um, uh, someone would would mix uh, mustard with honey and draw a cross on their cow to protect their the the, the milk and, and the cream, which was a staple source of income for for um, peasant cultures. Um, another variation of this spell, also from Poland, requires that you mix the mustard with tar, garlic, and and the dandelion dandelion like sow thistle. Um, and as you were rubbing it onto the onto the cow's horns, you had to recite a a, a verbal charm, which ran something like. Um, Witches and witch children, you won't take my triple profit, meaning the cream, whey, and milk. For you will stink disgustingly, just, just like this mustard mixed with these other things. And uh, this charm was supposed to remain intact um, as long as the mustard remained bitter and the honey remained sweet and sticky. And um, that is really all she wrote about, about mustard. Um, it's 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 good in money magic, and um, it is particularly renowned in protection spells, probably because of its of its very um, 
fiery-like flavor that is is somewhat similar um, to to um, garlic in a sense that um, if you have uh, a, little, a little too much, it it'll sour your breath a bit. So um, uh, think of that the next time you use mustard in your food or your, or your cooking. Um, I I myself plan to um, um, make my own mustard with this um, ground spice that I that I have had laying around for a little while. You know, it it just occurred to me that I might have forgot forgotten to mention that uh, mustard is also a sacred herb to the Hindu hearth god Agni. So, if you um, serve Agni, maybe give him a, a little mustard now and again because he's quite partial to that spice. So, as always. Throughout this series, I wanted to recommend one book. If no one has ever heard of it before, if you've um, never seen it before, um, it's definitely worth your while. It is Anna Franklin and Susan Lavender's monumental work, Herbcraft. Now, the reason why this book is so important to me is, and as you can see, it, it's careworn. The Spine is falling to pieces. I've had to um, um, secure it with um, tape um, for years, and the side is dingy from being used so often. Now, when I first began my studies and first began practicing the craft, the first book I ever bought on herbal magic was, of course, Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. And that book serves a purpose to some. Um, however, it only seemed to serve a purpose to those who um, didn't want to know much more than sort of the, the surface magical uses and meanings of certain herbs. I, however, wanted to know the why and the wherefore. I wanted to know why a herb uh, behaved magically in a certain instance. You know, for example, I wanted to know the legends and lore behind, behind, you know, why roses are used in love spells, you know, um, why peppermint is associated with lust. You know, I, I wanted to know... Um, I wanted to know the magical uses of herbs more intimately, much more deeply. And Cunningham's book really didn't satisfy that need. Um, I owned it for many years, and I found that I never really used it. It was never really a reference to me, because it, it wasn't really answering the questions that I had. Uh, fast forward to a few years afterwards, and I bought this book, and it provided exactly the sort of information that I was looking for. In fact, it um, this book is actually the inspiration for a book that I am writing on the subject. Um, so if, if you want to know more about herbal magic, then Cunningham's book will typically allow for... Um, Definitely, definitely get get this book. It will serve you well. It served me well. Um, you know, uh, it's here in the U.S. It's it's we produced a lot of very jaded pagans. It it, it it's it's occurred to me because um, so many pagans are used to very minimalist works such as Scott Cunningham's books and other contemporary pagan authors that only really um, graze the surface of the subject they're speaking about. And it's come to the point that um, they simply don't buy books by witches anymore. They think that witches are ill-equipped to write on uh, on the subject that they have to be writing on, and that's not always true. You know, I I take a very logical approach to um, to the subject of herbal lore and magical herbalism, using a very analytical mind. You know, a very comparative methodology. 
that allows me to say that um, this class of herbs are used in, in often in this way and you can repeat that sort of analytical methodology across the board to a variety of herbs that are ruled by similar planets, um, similar signs and elements, so on and so forth. Um, unfortunately, um, I bought this book back when the value of a dollar was about half the value of a pound. So. Um, at the time, this book cost me like $45 when it's it's still like almost 20 pounds on, on the publisher, publisher's website. And um, I, I, I decided to, to look it up again because um, uh, the last time I looked it up, it, it was for sale for, uh, for about $25 on Amazon. But I was surprised to see Amazon selling it for between ninety-two and almost a hundred dollars. It's it's ridiculous when the book is still in print. So far as I know, anyway, um, the the publisher is still producing it. Um, I've I've sent them an email asking about that. So as soon as, as soon as I know, I will absolutely let you know, and perhaps um, they can contact Amazon to. Um, get that price down and, and ensure they have brand new copies direct from the publisher so that they can, you know, sell them and and make sure that more American witches and pagans have access to her craft by Anna Franklin and Susan Lavender. So, until next time, my witches, keep calm and witch on. Mm. Oh my god. This book... This book right here, I wish this book had been published years ago, back when I was first starting out. This book was published in 2003.